landed like a bombshell when CBC broke the news on Monday. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, John Baird's resignation. Chief Correspondent Peter Mansbridge sat down with John Baird and pushed him on why he's leaving. Do you have anything arranged or lined up? Or I've had certainly had a few people, uh, a few friends that I've spoken with when I was making my decision whether I would run again, uh, that uh, you know that uh, have given me some helpful advice, but uh, nothing I'm announcing uh, right now. But are we talking like a law office or a bank or a, you know corporate boards? Nothing or? I'm announcing right now, though. There, so there are there are clearly options on the table. Though. Absolutely. We are back now with round two of the Sunday Scrum. Susan Riley and Rosemary Barton in Ottawa. Martin Patrick Wynn in Montreal. So, Susan, kick us off on this one. You heard uh, John Baird there. Does it ring true? Do you think he is leaving for a big job, or what's up here? I'm going to solve the mystery for you, Jennifer, and for all of <laughs> our viewers. Okay, good. He's, I think he's going to follow in the footsteps of Jim Prentice, who made a very successful transition. You remember he became a vice president of CIBC. I don't know if there's openings there. I haven't checked. I should really look into that. My guess guess is that Mr. Baird will segue into some role like that. Jim Prentice was able to carry it off with, without running into the very strict conflict of interest rules that this very government put in that put very in minister place. John Baird brought that in. Right. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. So um, that's what he's going to do for a few years. I think he's going to wait out the Kathleen Wynne interregnum in uh, in Ontario and then return and try to become the, pre the Conservative Premier of Ontario. Wow. That's a good I've got one. it all. <coughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's an interesting one. one. I think that's what he's going to do. I'm, I wouldn't be a bit... He's too political. He's too, too impassioned by politics to stay out of it and stay out of the limelight frankly, for long. So let Christine Elliott uh, carry on then. I guess he kind of missed the deadline on that one if he did want to yeah, run for that it, job. He did. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's who knows? She may have miss. second thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, what's your gut feeling here? Uh, like I said, just on the just on the sort of cut uh, cut Susan off, but I think I think it's a good deadline to miss. I, I think that it's going to. I think the bloodbath in the uh, Ontario Conservative Party is going to continue. Uh, you leave politics because uh, the party you're you're uh, representing is faltering. Uh, you get another offer somewhere else. You want to pursue something else, or you're not getting along with the boss. I. I don't see the Conservative Party faltering, just the opposite. I think they're sort of getting into the territory now, the three-way race, with a lot of talk about security and terror, where the government's going to get into the fight that it wants to get into. So I don't think it's that. I don't think it's, you know, outwardly at least, it's impossible to tell, but I don't think there's any friction between him and, and Stephen Harper, per se. I honestly think that there's there's something else out there. You know, he's been in politics for 20 years. He's been screaming for the last 10 of them because he's the sort of the, the pit bull on, on, a, on a bunch of different files. Uh, and uh, so I think maybe, he's, I think Susan has a very good point. I hadn't thought of it, but Ontario, you know, and, you know, get, mm -hmm. get out of politics, ha take some hauls, get get your voice back and uh, you know get back have another kick at the can in a few years after uh, however many millions of dollars at a nice cushy job for a little while. That's funny you talk about the screaming because I remember him when he was uh, sitting in the provincial cabinet. Pitbull was the word we were using back then and now that's almost 20 years ago. Yeah. So Rosie perhaps no friction between John Baird and the Prime Minister maybe until now when uh, the Prime Minister allegedly found out partly through the media this was all yeah. unfolding. Mm -hmm. uh, we should also maybe mention the pension theory theory yeah I, I, I don't I, I, I'm not a fan of that theory that he was waiting till he hit the eight years so we could collect a big pension I mean maybe that factored into his decision but this is the former foreign affairs minister of a G7 nation he's not really going to be suffering in terms of employment mm -hmm. and financial gain down the road you know he, he, he's I don't know where he's headed there's also rumors that he's gonna end up at a law firm uh, I think I think he'll be fine I haven't quite figured out what this is about yet and there are a lot of rumors spinning in Ottawa about what's you know whether there was friction whether there was some sort of problem um, you know I take him at his word when when he when he says that he you know wanted to change wanted to move on as Marty points out he's been doing this for most of his adult life you know he's he's only 45 it's possible he wants to go make some uh, big money he wants to focus on his his own life that kind of thing I mean he hadn't even replaced his cat who died <laughs> famously <laughs> named Margaret Thatcher mm -hmm. so you know maybe he'll have access to that kind of stuff <laughs> 
<laughs> but but I think mm. I actually do not think that he um, is going to get back into politics. I I, I don't I, never say never, right? But I actually think he is seeing uh, perhaps that he will not be the next leader to replace Stephen Harper. Uh, that he doesn't want to sit in another minority government potentially. Um, that he doesn't want to be part of the race uh, for Stephen Harper's job, um, and so he is looking for other opportunities. I, I don't know that, but that, that's what that's what I feel, I, and I'm not even sure about being Ontario Premier either. Um, you know, I, I'll say I'll say one last point about him. While he was a pit bull for for most of his career, particularly on Parliament Hill, I do think that he became someone else when he got the job of Foreign Affairs Minister. Mm -hmm. It is a job that doesn't naturally um, fit the role of pit, pit bull. You have to be a little more diplomatic, and I think he he um, and lots of people have said this. He grew into that job, and I think that that's true. Um, and you know, I give him credit for seeing that opportunity and for taking it. it was I, I was looking at some old columns I wrote about him and I wrote many times about him because mm -hmm. he was I was working for an Ottawa newspaper and he was the uh, yeah. the Ottawa MP um, I called him a Rottweiler actually so he graduated <laughs> from Pitbull to Rottweiler Variation I, call on a a, theme. I call him a foghorn I call him a windbag I mean a lot of people are <laughs> ordinary viewers are probably thinking why uh, some of the commentaries about him have been so kind including from his mm. uh, rivals by the Absolutely. way um, yeah he all they remember is that snarling twisted face I mean he was the face of hate mm -hmm. for a lot of people yep. for a Just long time that runs deep in him too yes when he was off stage so to speak he reminded me of Brian Mulroney in that way Brian Mulroney had such a different persona when he was not when the when the camera lights were off mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless um, you know he was a real he was a very destructive force in a lot of ways, and and uh, I don't think we should overstate uh, his statesmanlike demeanor. Yes, no, right. he, no. Yeah. he actually he actually doesn't sound like a dog at all. He sounds like a cat a little bit. Uh, but the, <laughs> the uh, it, uh, one of the one of my fit more, most edifying conversations I've ever had about John Baird was with uh, <clears throat> Erwin Kotler, former Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. and Erwin Kotler and him got along famously. And anybody who gets along with Erwin Kotler must be have a good bone somewhere in his body. <laughs> all right, it's we have true. to leave that there. It'll be fascinating to watch what happens, uh, not only for the Harper Conservatives heading into that election without John Baird, but also for the man himself. I want to uh, change topics now to the motion that was tabled Friday that invites the RCMP to lead all the operational security on the Hill. This, of course, stemming from that shooting on the Hill back in Ottawa, where there were reports of communication problems with many different levels and layers of security. So uh, we're almost out of time, guys, but uh, just a quick go round from all of you on this. So Susan, kick us off. Uh, why the mixed messages? What do you think is happening here? It's just a bungled introduction of what may not be such a bad idea, which is the RCMP would take over security on the Hill. Um, security on the Hill, look, there are all these silos, you know, the Senate's got their own little police force and the Commons has their own little police force and the Ottawa police are about streets and the RCMP watch other streets. In, in 1999, during anti-globalization protests, I remember chasing protesters around doing a story, uh, you know, and not being able to get through a barricade because the Ottawa police officer couldn't talk to the RCMP police officer or down the, the road. I mean, this must drive people who want change crazy, so I can see why they rushed it. Uh, however, it was really clumsily done. Uh, the, the security forces on the Hill, too, are very upset. These are guys that have been in these, uh, ladies as well, who have been in these jobs for decades. They feel like this is uh, someone saying that they're not doing their jobs properly. So it has become that sort of clash as well. Um, but I think everyone recognizes something needs to change mm -hmm. and it needs to be improved because, you know, we obviously can't go through something like that again. So does the RCMP have sort of a supervisory role over the guards? That's probably where it's headed, but um, it, the, a change is coming whether whether the guards on the hill like it or not. Certain Martin, it was not. interesting, even the RCMP yeah. commissioner Bob Paulson was taken aback by the timing. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, there, there are obviously there's the constitutionality issues that uh, yes. you know having a police force guard the very mm -hmm. government that governs it, that kind of thing. There's the manpower issue. Uh, you know, does the RCMP have enough people? That can all be solved. The thing that I find is, is sure streamlining and all that, but the problems that happen on Parliament Hill didn't happen necessarily in, within the House of Commons itself or yeah, within Parliament, true. like the actual building. When when Zabath Bibo got into that building, he was shot literally by the man who 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 uh, you know commands the the, the security on, on Parliament Hill? The problem was when coming in off the street onto the, the onto the grounds, yeah. where as everybody knows, there's RCMP officers everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't I don't necessarily see the need uh, for you know RCMP to take over everything as as a lot of other people do. 
Lots to watch on that one and so much more. The last word goes to you there, Martin. So thank you all of you. Susan Thanks Riley, Rosemary Thanks. Barton and Martin Patrick. And fascinating discussion. And remember, you can catch up with the Sunday Scrum online as well. Just go to cbcnews.ca and find the politics page.